Xin chào. We've reached the halfway point in this course, so it is a fitting time to start discussing the second broad category of circuits, sequential circuits. This video will lay the foundations by defining a couple key terms and providing some general schematics. We have seen this slide before, many lessons ago. It draws the line between the two broad categories of digital circuits, combinational and sequential. We have studied combinational circuits so far in this course. In them, output signals are functions only of current inputs, because they hold no memory. But that changes with sequential circuits. These have memory, which is stored in register circuits. That memory allows the output signals to be a function of previous inputs as well as current inputs. Let's zoom in to examine this schematic. Here we have a fun example of a sequential circuit, an air hockey scoring machine. At the top, we have the input signal, which would be triggered by the little lever inside the goal. Most of the time that signal might be a zero, but when the puck enters the goal, it hits the lever and sends a signal of one into the circuit. That one activates an incrementer, which, as we know, adds one to a given value. What is that given value in this case? It is the current score in the air hockey game. That score just sits at a constant value, waiting, 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 until a goal is scored. Then it increases by one. Then it waits some more until the next goal is scored. This pattern continues until enough points are scored and the game is over. That will be determined by this output decoder. Let's say that six points are needed to win the game. Currently, five points show in the register, so we are near the end. The moment the next goal is scored, this decoder sends an active signal, which would turn on the siren and flashing lights to let you know that you won, or your opponent won. This example only shows one person's score. This is a simple example, but it contains all the features of a typical sequential circuit. At the heart is a register circuit, which holds the state memory. That memory feeds back into itself after passing through the next state logic. The next state logic is any combinational circuit that tells the memory what it should update to. Notice that it considers both the current memory and the input signal. The memory also feeds into the output logic. Again, this is a combinational circuit, but with a different purpose. It sends the output signals, which might determine the behavior of another circuit or of a peripheral, like the flashing lights in this example. Get used to seeing these components. Input signal, next state logic, state memory, output logic, and output signal. Sequential circuits could be either synchronous or asynchronous. I've discovered that many people don't know the distinction between these terms, especially with the recent movement in education to both synchronous and asynchronous lessons. Side note, I can't stand the term on your time online. Just call it asynchronous. Splitting apart that term gives us asynchronous. The prefix a just means not. The scene means with or together. The crone means clock or time. And this final us just means the word is an adjective. Putting it all together tells us that asynchronous means not with clock. So any behavior or circuit that occurs without regard for a clock is called asynchronous. Conversely, any behavior that is aligned with the clock is synchronous. On this slide, we see a very general block diagram of a sequential circuit. Notice how it has the same elements used in the air hockey example. In an asynchronous sequential circuit, changes within this memory can occur at any point in time. To control this, inputs must be timed to cause changes in the memory in the correct order, often through analysis of propagation delays and addition of time delay buffers. That can be cumbersome. And so, most sequential circuits are synchronous. This involves a clock device being connected to memory, which only allows that register to change states at specific points in time. 
the clock signal, often abbreviated CLK, is usually drawn like this, a square wave with equal times low and high. But that's not the only possible clock signal. All of these waveforms would work just fine. It usually doesn't matter how long the waveform is low or high, also known as the duty cycle. The key feature is the periodic waveform. This means that the cycles between low and high occur at regular periods or lengths of time. Speaking of time, it's time to wrap up this foundations lesson. We define key terms like clock and synchronous and explore the general layout of a sequential circuit. Over the next lessons, we will dive into the details of how these circuits are constructed and ultimately how we can apply them to build useful machines.